So after my tier list of the 15 questline characters in Vigilante 8 Second Offense, I learned a few things. Mostly the fact that there are just some obvious things some people don't know about this game. So here is 40 facts you might not have known about Vigilante 8 Second Offense. There's a new feature that allows you to change the color and the brightness of your car if you press the circle button. If you change the color of your vehicle, that character's special weapon changes as well. For example, the lightning on Lord Clyde or the laser on Chassis Star Power. When you KO an enemy, they will drop one random salvage point, and when you total them, they will drop three salvage points from their highest stat. Changing the damage option changes how much damage weapons will do to both you and your opponent, but did you know it changes how many points that they will drop as well? It's 3 for low damage, 5 for medium, and 7 for high. When you collect 50 points of one stat, a new part will be bolted to your car, and if you max out all 4 stats, your car's chassis will completely change into its hot rod version. Every boss you fight will be the upgraded version, and any upgraded enemy is certain to spawn with at least one clip of their special weapon. Molo, Boogie, and Sheila are the only Vigilante 8 characters to keep the same special weapon throughout all three games in the series. Speaking of Molo, did you know he was originally planned to keep his school bus? It was later changed to a prison bus due to sensitivity to violence. When you use a weapon combination or a special weapon on a wrecked opponent, they will become totaled. However, Obaki's special weapon, the Rift Blade, is the only weapon in the game that is unable to total an opponent. Many of the cast return for the second installment of Vigilante 8, but did you know that the final character from Vigilante 8, Why the Alien, makes his return in Second Offense as the Garbage Man? This is shown in his ending movie. Omar stands for Oil Monopoly Alliance Regime, and they are considered to be the main antagonist of the series. Since they paid Sid Byrne in the previous game, and allowed Slick Clyde to steal the time travel devices to allow him to travel back into 1977. John Tork, Sheila, and Convoy are the only three vigilantes to stay as a vigilante throughout all three installments in the series. Meanwhile, only Boogie and Molo have remained as coyotes through all three installments. One of Sheila's character select quotes has her speaking minimal Spanish, hinting that she either knows some Spanish or theorized by her tan skin and dark hair could be part Hispanic herself. Yo quiero kick your butt! John Talk's character is based on Richard Roundtree's original black action hero, John Shaft. The line, shut your mouth, that is heard in the main theme, is a reference to the main theme song of the movie Shaft. Shut your mouth. They say this cat Shaft is a bad mother. Team Fast's catchphrase, Dino Might, was inspired by J.J. Walker when he was on the TV series Good Times. The slang meant that something was terrific. Dynamite. Kid, a dynamite. <laughs> Out of the three characters depicted as Dave's Coltsman, two of them remain unnamed. The third goes by the name Dorkiel. Dallas 13 is revealed to be Darius in both his and Obaki's questlines. The two of them were tasked with breaking into Stanford University and stealing the Time Displacement Units, which was a success, but Darius paid for it with his life. Clyde thought his brain was still an asset, so hence Dallas 13 was born. Lord Clyde's special weapon, Chain Lightning, is the only weapon in the game that has a guaranteed whammy if it only hits one opponent. The only weapon to come close to this is the Blazing Glory Rockets, as the weapons are counted as three different projectiles, but it is possible to avoid them, unlike Chain Lightning. Obaki's real name is Kaiko Uzimi, and was adopted by Lord Clyde after her father's sudden disappearance. She became Clyde's star pupil and Omar's best assassin. Obaki is Japanese for ghost. She gained this nickname from her childhood friend Darius. She also has a possible Ghostbusters reference in one of her victory quotes. You can't hide from your ghosts. I'm afraid of no ghosts. If you input a cheat code, you'll hear a voice line from Boogie saying, Funky. Okay. When you hear Barbo speaking, that's not actually him. 
He uses a NASA flight log recordings that are quickly fast forwarded or reversed to piece various quotes together. It's also stated he has a weakness for oatmeal and fruits, all of which hints at his true identity. So I've got long arms. So what? Houston, we have a go. Main engine start. According to the Garbage Man's biography, civilians have dubbed him the Recycler, due to his desperate and sometimes violent desire to collect scrap metal and electronics. Agent Chase's special weapon, Hard Time, is the only special weapon you can't whammy with due to the lack of damage it outputs. However, you can set up much easier whammies after you use it. After the first V8 game, Chassis Blue seeked out a career in Hollywood. This, however, was cut short after a scandal put her out of a job and was forced to return to the FBI. It is later revealed that the FBI were actually the ones who gave the edited photo to the paparazzi and forced her fall from fame. Padre's name in English means Father Destiny. It is also hinted that Padre has some form of military background due to the chain of bullets he wears and his army-type vehicle. In the Arizona stage, if you destroy the observatory, then a giant meteor will crash down into the crater of the center of the map. Then after a set time or a set amount of damage, a giant ant will come out and attack nearby players. If you complete one of the three special events on the Utah stage, flag, ski jump, or bobsled run, then weapons or repair icons will appear on the winner's podium. Could you never find those last few items on that Louisiana level? That's because you have to flood the level to get to them. On the far side of the level are two dams. You need to shoot them in order to raise them up. Once you fully raise both, a sound will play and the entire level, except for part of the mansion and part of the graveyard, will be flooded. If you grabbed a water ski pickup, you can glide over the top and collect special weapons, repairs, and those all-important quest items. There are two traps in the lake on the Louisiana map. If you trap the alligator, you will be rewarded with special weapons and repair icons. This is also objective B for the drifter quest line. If you have a weapon in all three slots and continually walk between the mansion and the crypt, your weapon's ammo count will be filled until all three reach maximum capacity. This will still work even after the crypt and or mansion is destroyed. Located at the back of the launch tower on the Florida map, there is an entrance with lights above it. If the lights are red, you'll be spat out on one of the sites. However, if it's green, you'll be launched into space and parachute back down, collecting weapons and repairs on the way. In the Drifter quest line, these become items that must be delivered. You can also launch the rocket on the Florida map. On the right side of the NASA control building is a small room, and if you drive into it, a beep will play confirming that the rocket is moving. Once the rocket reaches the launch tower, a radio will say going live, and fire starts to spew out from the underside of the tower. You can then go into the NASA control building again to confirm the launch, and a countdown will begin. This is also required to complete Objective B in the Vigilante quest line. If you attack the train in Pennsylvania, it will drop quest items. The train can also be destroyed if it collides with a destroyed bridge or one of the parked train carriages. You can shoot the small signs located around the Pennsylvania map to change the train's direction. This is required to help park the train and complete Objective B in the Drifter quest line. There are two very large nuclear reactors outside the main building on the Minnesota map. These can be destroyed, however they cause massive amounts of damage to the surrounding area, and the radioactive effect stores vehicles caught in the blast. This is required to complete Objective B in the Coyote quest line. On the upper floor in the main building of the Minnesota map, if you destroy the small machines with the green blinking lights, a random power-up will pop out. On the far side of the Alaskan map, there is a body of water with an orca who attacks you and icebergs that spawn in from outside the map. If you attack these, they will break down into smaller icebergs, and if you destroy the smallest iceberg version, it will reward you with a repair item or a crate. This is also required to complete Objective B for the Drifter quest line. The lighthouse on the Californian map is accessible if you follow the road to your right at the spawn point. You then shoot the doors and drive through. You'll then be granted hovers and be shot towards the top of the large building where you'll find one special weapon crate and two repair items. However, some super heavyweight characters cannot make the jump as they are too slow. Vigilante 8's second offense was originally announced in 1998 with the title Vigilante 12, to reference the 12 characters at the time. This was later changed when the total was brought up to the 18 we all know and love. And finally, in December of 1999, Activision teamed up with Chaos Comics to create the second offense comic. This comic builds on certain points that weren't in the game, like the aftermath of the Stanford University heist and Nina's rescue of Boogie. 
And there you have it, 40 facts about Vigilante 8's second offense. Of course, I have to give thanks to the team running the Vigilante 8 wiki. Without their help, this video would not have been possible. I'm, uh, I'm still bad at closing statements, so I'll just fade to black.